Hey all, so this is a section of story problems, application problems. Uh, mostly sticking to kind of two styles, some geometry ones. If you're in my class, uh, I always include the formulas on the exam, so you don't have to worry about memorizing them. And then the second style will involve uh, percentages. And they're, they're a little bit tricky, but kind of once you get the flow of them, they're all basically the same problem with different words. So let's see if we can make some sense of this. Uh, so this first one goes... Rectangle is four times as long as it is wide. The perimeter is 60 feet. Find the dimensions. And so then I forgot to put it on this question, but on the exam, it would have something like, recall uh, two widths plus two lengths equals the perimeter. Um, so what we want to do, I, I included a little chart here for widths and lengths just so we can kind of organize our work. So a rectangle is four times as long as it is wide. So the length is four times the width. So I'm going to let the width be X. I could let it be W, whatever. I'll just use X's. And then um, it's four times as long. So four times X is going to equal the length. And then once I have these, so this is my W equals X. My L equals 4X. I can plug into here. So I'll have 2 times W, which I'm calling X, plus 2 times the length, which is this 4X. We'll get some parentheses there to show we're going to multiply. And that equals the perimeter is 60 feet. So we'll throw that right here. And then cleaning this up a little bit. So we're kind of back to section 1.1. 2 times 4 is 8x. And that's going to equal 60. So 10x equals 60. We'll make that more of a 6. And divide over the 10. And X is uh, 6. So coming back here we go, okay, what was X again? X is the width. So the width equals 6. And then the length, well the length equals 4X. So plugging this in, I get 4 times 6 equals 24. So then length ah, <laughs> equals 24. Okay, another geometry problem. Uh, the length of a rectangle is three inches more than four times the width. The perimeter is 96 inches. Find the length and the width, and then there's my recall. Perimeter equals two lengths plus two widths. And I think the last time I wrote it the other direction. And it doesn't really matter. I just preferred for subbing in that direction. Uh, so the length of a rectangle, three inches more than four times the width. So again, it's length, blah, 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 width. So that means we want the, um, width to kind of be the plane variable because we're going to write the length in terms of it. So we've got three inches more, so we have to add three inches to four times this amount. So the length is going to be 4x plus three inches more. And then we're just substituting into this. Again, I'm going to do it this way just because it looks a little bit nicer. So two times the width, which is x, plus two times the length, and this whole expression is the length. So 4x plus 3 equals p, and that was 96. And so now that we've got our algebraic expression, we can kind of clean this up a little bit and solve for x. So 2x plus 2 times 4 is 8x, 2 times 3 is 6, equals 96. 2 and 8, that's going to give me 10x's, plus 6 equals... 96. And we're back to our, now it's simplified, add, subtract, multiply, divide. So I'll take the 6 over, and 10x equals 90, and divide out that 90, or sorry, divide the 10, and x equals 9. So then our length, and that was our, our width, and then our length equals 4 times 9 plus 3. So the length equals 36 plus 3 or 39. So 9 and 39. Okay, so this next one's a triangle. Uh, one side of a triangle is 3 times the shortest. The third side is 4 more than the shortest. Perimeter is 44. Find all three sides. And then recall perimeter, you just add up the sides is all. So we had a lot of blah, 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 shortest, blah, 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 shortest. 
So I'm going to make this first side the short one. And I'm just going to let that be x, and then we'll write these other two in terms of it. So one side is three times the shortest. Make that right here, 3x. Third side is four feet more than the shortest, so it's x, and then four feet more. And then we just have to add these three sides up and set them to 44, which is our perimeter. So I'll say first side plus second side plus third side makes our perimeter there of 44. And we're back to collecting terms and solving. So I got one, two, three, four, five x's plus four equals 44. Take the four over. And five x equals 40. And then we'll just divide out the five. And get x equals eight. So the other thing I like about making this list is now when I get back to the spot, it's really easy to go, okay, so then that makes my second side three times eight. Second side's 24. And then my third side would be eight plus four equals 12. So eight, 24, and 12 are my three sides. But it gives me a nice easy spot, kind of organized to be able to go back and figure out what I still need to find. Okay, another triangle problem. Uh, one angle of a triangle measures 60 degrees more than the smallest, while the third angle is twice the smallest. Find the measure of each angle. Recall the sum of the angles is 180. So if you add up the angles of a triangle, the interior angles are always going to add to 180. So our formula is kind of a first angle, second angle, third angle makes 180. Um, so a lot of this, again, is the blah, 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 smallest, third angle, blah, 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 smallest. Um, and so we want to let, I'll just let this first one be the small one. I'll let that be my plain X and I'll write the other two in terms of it again. So one angle of a triangle measures 60 more than the smallest. So that'll be X plus 60. And then the third one's twice the smallest. So that is going to be 2X. And then we just chunk them in here, set it to 180 and solve. So X, our first angle, X plus 60, our second angle. 2x is our third angle, that makes 180. We got 1, 2, 3, 4 x's plus 60 equals 180 degrees. Uh, take the 60 over. And 4x equals 120. And divide over that 4, that'll get us our first angle. So x equals 4 goes in 30 times. So first one's 30 degrees. So then our next one was x plus 60. So that would be uh, 30 plus 60. So then 30 plus 60 is 90 degrees. And then our last angle is 2x. So that will be 2 times our 30. And then that gets us 60 degrees for the third angle. Okay, this one's a little bit of a variation on a geometry problem. Um, a livestock pen is built in the shape of a rectangle that's four times as long as it is wide. The perimeter is 80 feet. If the material used to build the pen is 275 a foot for the longer sides, 550 a foot for the shorter sides, something about gates, uh, find the cost to build the pen. Okay, so let's, uh, sometimes it's helpful to draw kind of what you're doing just to organize your head. So we have um, four times as long as it is wide. So if I make the short sides x, then that means the long sides are 4x. Um, eventually I need to figure out the cost of the pen, but to do that I would need to know how long all these sides are, so it's basically just another perimeter problem. So we'll go um, here, yeah, I can just kind of look at it, right? I have x plus x. That's why it's 2x in the formula, 4x plus 4x, that's why it's, or I guess 2w plus 2l. And that equals 80 feet. So 2, 4, and 4 makes 10x equals 80. Divide the 10, and we get x equals 8. So, um, this side is 8, so let me redraw this now. 
but so is this side. And then if x is 8, 4 times 8 would be 32. So for the short sides, I have um, 16 feet. And then for the long sides, it's got to get both sides in there. Oops, that says log, long side. We have uh, 64 feet. So then coming back up here, they gave us some prices. So material used to build a pen is 275 a foot on the longer side, 550 on the short. So now we have our, our lengths. So we can say uh, short side times, that was the expensive one, yeah, so 550. And then the um, longer side, which was 64 feet, and that's times 275. And that's gonna equal our total cost. So let's see, I did this off to the side here. Uh, if you chunk that in a calculator, I didn't bother to write down the in-between numbers, but I got uh, $264 when I plugged that in as my total cost. Okay, and then these next problems are the percent problems I talked about at the beginning. Um, these are a little bit tricky, except that they're all the exact same thing. So once you kind of figure out the trick to them, then they're not so tricky. Um, let me read you this first one and then kind of tell you where people go wrong and then we'll figure out how not to do that. So Shane returned from a trip to Las Vegas with 300 bucks, which was 50% more money than he had at the beginning of the trip, which seems really unlikely. Uh, how much money does Shane have at the beginning of his trip? So people read this and they go, okay, he came back with $300, which was 50% more. So then they go 50% of 300. Okay, that's 150, take that off. So he had 150 at the beginning of the trip which is unfortunately totally not right. Because think about if you said 50% of 150, that would be $75, add that on, doesn't get you back to the 300. So something's wrong there um, with that math. So you can't just do 50% or percent times the number that's there, because it's 50% more of what he had at the beginning, not at the end. So you're taking 50% of the wrong number. So um, a good way to think about this is if you, if you knew the answer, how would you set it up? So he had some money at the start, right? He took some money to, to Vegas with him. And then he had 50% more money when he came back. So I can say money plus 0.50, that would be 50%, right? We move the decimal two places, times the money. There's our 50% more money, and that's gonna make 300. Because he had some money, then he got 50% more money, that makes $300. So you can see the 50% of the thing we don't know, not the thing we do know. And that's where people get hung up. So let's write this so it looks a little bit more like math. We're just going to let the money at the beginning of the trip equal x. So that'll give me x plus money at the beginning of the trip. 50% of that equals 300. Now we went from words to math. Um, sometimes this invisible one freaks people out with the decimal. So this is like a buck plus 50 cents. So this is like a dollar fifty. X equals 300. And then we divide that over. Um, you should get 200. So 200 bucks. So if we think about the problem again, Shane returned from Vegas with 300 bucks, which is 50% more. So if you're left with 200, 50% of that is 100, add that back on, there's the 300. So again, the key is to not take the percent of the thing you see, it's the percent of the thing you don't know. So let me do a couple more examples that have that same thing in it. And like I said, kind of once you know the trick to them, they're all the same problem and they're not so bad. Suppose a college bookstore buys a textbook from a publishing company and then marks up the price they paid for the book 30%, sells it to the student at uh, the marked up price. If the student pays 104 bucks, uh, what did the bookstore pay for around to the nearest cent? So the bookstore has some cost and then they're going to take 30% of this cost. That's going to be their markup. Let's call it the markup right now. And then that's going to equal their sell price. So cost plus however much they mark it up makes sell. Um, we know the sell, that's the $104.
We know the percentage of the markup. We don't know the dollar amount, but we know the percentage is 30%. Um, and we don't know the cost. So I'm going to let cost equal X. And then the markup is going to be whatever that cost was. It's going to be 30% of that. So I can say 30% X equals my cell over here of 104. So now I have um, invisible one again. So 1 plus 30, 0.3. And equals 104 and then just divide over that 1.3 there I keep writing this 0 just to try to show it's 30% but it's not necessary and that came out to 80 bucks so it looks like X is $80 Okay, last one. Number eight, um, an employee earns eighteen thirty-six per hour after receiving an 8% raise. What was the employee's hourly pay before the raise? So round your answer to near set. So when you get a raise, right, it's not like of the new amount, it's you had some old salary. So you had the old salary, and then they're getting an 8% raise, so it's gonna be 8% of that old salary. Careful not to do 0.8, because that'd be 80. So there's the raise, and that's going to equal the new salary. So the old salary, that's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, pay before the raise. So we'll call that 1x plus 0.08 of that old salary that we don't know. And that's going to get us our new salary, or hourly wage, I guess. Invisible 1 right there, so that is 1.08x equals 18.36. Divide over the 1.08, and looks like x equals uh, seventeen dollars per hour. Cool, and that concludes uh, 1.3 applications.